G'day everyone, uh, back here for the last video today. It's uh, just gone three o'clock. Uh, I'll do this one, upload it, and then uh, that's me for, done for the day. Uh, this is an apps video on bipartite graphs. Now, um, these are not really that hard, but if you don't see what's happening, then it's going to be hard to make the questions, uh, you get any marks in the questions. By meaning two, bicycle, you can think of a hundred and other one words like that. Part, meaning separate or distinct. I, I don't know what that bit means. Bipartite graphs. Now, think about this example here. Students and jobs. Let's say I've got four students in my class and I've got three jobs that need to be done. Now, because of the skill level in each job, not every student can do every job. You see, maybe job X is uh, heading on out down to where the waste bins are, and, and it's quite high there, it's quite high. So you've got to be a reasonable height to be able to lift the bin up and over and tip it in, you see. Um, but maybe, maybe job Y is something else where you need a little bit of smarts to do the job, and a uh, few of you aren't able to do it, you know, just a little bit above your pay grade. So maybe job Y doesn't suit some people, and maybe job Z in the same way. So a bipartite graph is going to look like this. They're two distinct sets of things that we're measuring or we're using. So put the, the first ones across the top, and then put the other ones across the bottom. Now, it doesn't mean that one person can only do one job. Right? So let's say that person A they're pretty, they're pretty smart there, they're tall, they're smart, they can do everything, right? So person A may do this, because they can do every job. But person B, they can only do job X, so that's the only one. Person C actually can't do any of them, that's okay. Person D can do job X and job Z. Done. That could be a bipartite graph. Now, if if you needed to assign one job to each person, one job to each person. Well, person C, they're kind of not really much use to you because they weren't qualified to do any of them. So you're not going to assign them a job. But uh, maybe, maybe in another situation they could do something. Now have a look at this. Of the three jobs, job Y can only be done by person A. Job Y can only be done by A because B doesn't have a line there, and D doesn't have a line there. So therefore, I must assign job Y to person A. It's the only person that can do it. So once that's out of the equation, effectively A is done. They're off to do their job. Person B can do job X, and that's good, because person D can do both, you see. So once we remove person A, the only other person that can do job X is person B. So job X must go to person B. And once we take them out of the equation, the only one left is job Z that person D must do. Because they're the only ones left. They were qualified to do X, but they couldn't do X because then no one would be able to do Z. So this is a way you can use bipartite graphs to graph them up and then see how you're going to allocate your jobs based on who can do what. All right? Because if you just gave job A to sorry, job X to person A, that wouldn't work. You'd be left with jobs you couldn't fill. So it's a neat little way. Out of the book there, question 10 and question 11 are asking you to show whether this could be a bipartite graph or not. Now here's the trick, here's the trick with this. Take a bit of a line through your diagram, always keeping one, per, one job to the left, one job to the right. So see how I come in here? Okay, I'm splitting those two. I'm splitting those two. A and B are going to be in separate camps. Okay? Then I come around here. Notice how B and D are in separate camps because they're on either side of the green line. So that means A and D are in the same camp. So let's see what we've got at the moment. At the moment, A and D are in one camp, so I'm going to put A, D, and on the other side of the line is B. So let's carry on that green line. 
I'm going to turn the green line this way. So that means that C is on the same side as what B is. So C's got to be there. And then if I keep turning the line here, so A and D are on one side of the line, B, C and E are on the other side. Keep turning the line, you can probably see where I'm going to go. E, C and B are on one side, A, D and F are on the other side. And then if I follow on here, that means G is going to be on this lower side. Get rid of this line, don't need him anymore. Now let's link the jobs together. So can you see how A and B is linked? So A and B are linked. Done. B and D are linked. Done. D and C are linked. D and E are linked. E and F are linked. F and G are linked. There's my bipartite graph for this tree diagram. So a tree diagram can turn into a bipartite graph if you can snake a line around and separate any two that are next to each other. If you can't separate two that are next to each other, you can't turn it into a bipartite graph. Question number 11 is a grand, grand question. Now, I know straight away this won't work. I know that it won't work. See if you can spot what the issue is. Let me start over here. This is good, this is good, this is good, this is good. We're okay here, we're okay here. So D and B are on one side, C and E are on one side. Now comes in the problem. If I go there, can you see how B and A are on the same side of the green line, but they're linked together? So that would mean that there'd have to be some link like this. And we can't have that because a bipartite graph is two distinct sets. Okay, well you say, well, all right, don't go that way, go this way. Well now A and C are, are on the same side and have a link. Can't happen. So regardless which way I go here, this is not gonna work. Okay, this is not gonna work. Now the key thing here is I've got a triangle. I've got a triangle, and with three things, with three things that are all linked together, I can't put them on either side of a bipartite graph, either side of this line, and not have a link going across the middle. Because effectively this, if I put A and B on one side and C on the other, here's my imaginary line through the middle, then I have to do this. And no matter how I rearrange these, I'm never going to get them on either side of the line without that link. If I rotate it around one spot, put C here, put A there, put B there, I'm still going to end up with at least two of them on one side of the line with a link between. Now this question could ask you, remove one link to make it a bipartite graph. And then if I remove that link there, then this would be okay. That would be okay. Notice how C and E are on one side, D, B and A are on the other side. Or you could do the opposite. You could remove that link and then this would be okay because B and D are on one side, A, C and E are on the other side. Fair bit of thinking in this and, and trust me, you want to know this well, hit the exam, a new diagram, not knowing what's going on, you got to think real quick on these couple of marks in these, you haven't got time to think for too long. Hope this has helped you. See you later, guys.